Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Andrew and I today, we're going to talk about EDC. We're going to come at it from a different angle than it's often addressed. Everyday carry, the stuff that you have on you as it relates to your personal safety. No, this is not going to be an episode about guns and knives. It's about <laughs> so much more and so little of that. Stick around. You'll hear our take. I've got a different take than most people have. And, and I know Andrew's on the same page. Now, if you're new to our show, thanks for coming by. We appreciate you. And we would recommend that you go to whistlekick.com as soon as you can. Maybe you even pre press pause on this episode and go check it out. Because what we do here at Whistlekick is so much more than simply this show. We have multiple podcasts. We do events. We have products. And if you use the code podcast15 in the store, you can save 15% on any of the stuff in there. So check that out. Now, you could also go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. It's where you're going to find the show notes. Every single episode we've ever done, there are so many of them, depending on when you're watching or listening to this. There are many, 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 many episodes because we keep making more and we don't take them away. You can go back and watch episode, well, listen, there's no watch. You can go back and listen to episode one if you want to. And you know what? It's better than Star Wars episode one. <laughs> that, that you know what? That might be the most controversial thing I've ever said on this show. Then, we'll find and out. And then they can listen to episode one and then listen to this episode, which, well, theoretically, they're already listening to it because they and, would have and, been heard to go back listen to one. And I'm not going to say that episode one of Star Wars and episode one of Martial Arts Radio sync up in like a Pink Floyd sort of way, but I'm not going to say they don't. Well, what I was going to say is they could listen to how much better our podcast has gotten because of people who support the show financially through Patreon. Yeah, our, our Patreon's really been a huge element to what we do. It provides support. Honestly, it's also emotional support. It's not just financial support. It's emotional support. Knowing that people are like, hey, have some money. Am I, is my camera flickering on your screen too? It is. All right. So, um, Andrew, talk about Patreon for a minute. Patreon. So one of the things with Patreon that you get is value. I mean, one of the things that we here at Whistlekick strive for is to give you more than you give us. Uh, and I think there's no better way than to see how that works th than through our Patreon. For as little as $2 a month, you all automatically right away get an extra kind of behind the scenes peek behind the curtain uh, as to who's coming on for future guests. Um, at $5 a month, you get stuff mailed to you for free. Just, you know, yes, you get to help support the show. You get an extra uh, audio episode that is exclusive only to mm -hmm. Patreon subscribers, but you also get free things sent to you in the mail. I have, I'm going to turn my camera here. Your, so you your whistle kick printer. My whistle kick printer. All of these stickers, because I am a Patreon subscriber as well. So I got all of these stickers throughout the different months of yeah. Patreon. And, 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 it's, and it's more than stickers. You know, we just, if, if anybody can't tell, here's the business model for whistle kick. Do cool stuff, give it away, and then give people the opportunity to have or do more and make it so overwhelmingly compelling that they struggle to say no. Yeah. So I would challenge you to find a better deal for five bucks than our Patreon. Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't and, think you're going to find it. And you get the satisfaction of knowing that you are helping support yeah. traditional martial arts through this podcast. It's true. All right. I think my camera's better. Okay, yay. I have, to, I have to make an adjustment in the future, but uh, we'll do that as we record our next episode. So today, uh, this this idea of EDC, and it's an acronym that gets kicked around in the survival or prepper community quite frequently. And it's something that a lot of people kind of nerd out about. Like, oh, you know, uh, I've got a knife here and I've got a knife here and yep. I put this here and this is this is my everyday carry firearm and this and I put a fishing hook in my hat and I do this. And, you know, I could go out in the woods for 17 weeks with just what's on me. And, you know, they walk around with like like this because they're, yep. they're wearing there's so many pockets. 
And I'm not going to say that that's wrong. If that's how you choose to approach it, by all means. But here's the funny thing, and this correlates directly with conversations you and I have had about self-defense. The most likely stuff to happen is the least dramatic. Mm -hmm. Very true. The stuff that you should be prepared for in your self-defense classes, as you teach, seminar, whatever. It's about de-escalation. It's about avoidance. It's about conversation. It's not about, okay, here's how you kill someone in 46 ways. Because statistically, you need that far less often than the conversation skills, the de-escalation skills. And in fact, if you have the de-escalation skills, your likelihood of needing the violent skills are even less likely. So when, when we talk about the things that we carry on us and the things that you might consider carrying on you, it's not a list of firearms. It's not a whole bunch of knives. Nope. Not that either of us are opposed to firearms and knives. No. Nope. And if that's something that you want to carry and you know you do that responsibly, we're not going to tell you what you should carry. We're going to talk about what we do and why. Yep. And I will I will preface a little bit. One of the things on my list is a pocket knife, but I'm not talking a big long Bowie knife or a big Knife. I'm talking like a little, like a Swiss Army knife type, like that kind of small little knife. Yep, there you go. You have to watch. We're not going to tell you what uh, he just pulled out. <gasps> um, I would pull mine out, except I'm wearing my pajamas right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do we need to edit that? No. Are you sure? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Because one of my everyday carry items is a knife. And I can't pull it out because I'm not wearing my my, my uh, jeans because I have you, my pajamas on. I feel like you're missing what I'm what I'm laughing at. Oh, no, I'm purposely steering away from that. Okay, thank you. I'm still there. Keep keep driving the bus. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we're a little knife, a small knife, not a big survival knife where you can take that's got a compass on the end and you unscrew it and there's matches in there. Rambo and, had uh, one. Yeah, I had one as a kid because it was cool. We all did. Yeah. I'm talking a small knife. That is on my list, but I'm not carrying 12 knives. Right. This is this is the knife that I carry most of the time. And this is probably going to get us banned from something. I don't know who knows what, but it's a simple knife. This is a tool. I have never used it to harm anyone or anything. I, I don't even think I've ever cut any food with it. I open boxes. Yeah. I cut strings off, you know, jackets or whatever. Mm -hmm. it, it's it, now, can it be used in a self-defense way? Yes. Sure. Yeah. Would I rather have that than nothing? Of course. Mm -hmm. But my usage of this, the th ways that I can help myself are so much bigger than simply uh, uh, defending myself in a violent way. Let, let's, yeah. let's come up with ways that a knife could be beneficial and, and not just, you know, opening boxes, like, like actual keep you safe in a nonviolent way. How about yeah. uh, cutting a seatbelt if you get stuck? Absolutely. You, you hit the one I was going to hit first, mm. you know, like extracting yourself from a situation where you're bound, yep. whether it's a seatbelt or God forbid, uh, uh, you know, actually being tied up by somebody. Um, there are medical uses for a knife. Mm -hmm. uh, I am making a quick decision, not going to name any of them. So no one can ever sue me for saying, you know, but Jeremy said on martial arts radio that I could use my knife to perform this emergency surgery. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. But there are some things that one could use that for. Um, I've, I've used a knife. This is such a silly thing, but um, to take splinters out, you know, using the point to like, and, and get under and get a splinter out. Are, are we are we stretching the definition of self-defense? Absolutely. Can yeah. splitters get infected? Yes. yes sir. Is it theoretically possible that one could die from an infected splinter? Yes. Is it likely? No. No, no, no. But, but, that's it, a, but that is a useful reason to have one. Absolutely. And here's the reason. And, 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 and you know, I, I, another item on my list is a pen, by the way. Just a, a pen. 
right? One of the reasons these two items are on my list is I can quickly, and I know you can as well, Jeremy, because you did it just a second ago, quickly pull out your knife and have it ready. Mm -hmm. When I do, and, to, and why? Why can you quickly pull it out and have it ready? Because I've used it a million and one times. Exactly. So even though... I'm pulling it out right now to get a, a splinter out of my finger or to open up a box or to, you know, cut whatever, you know, Yeah. I'm constantly being able to grab it, you know, Hey, anybody got a pen? Oh, got one right here. You know, Oh, you need a pen? Oh, there. here you go. Like it's ready to go. It's and practice. It's inherent practice based exactly. on utility that translates in other ways. Exactly. I can use this knife in a violent way. I can use this pen in a violent way. I can use it as a, a Kubaton sort of a tool. Yeah. yeah. And it doesn't have to be something fancy like this. It can be a cheap Bic pen because it's better than nothing. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And the other reason to, to have a pen as an everyday carry item is to write things down. <gasps> you know, that person uh, that, you know, that person did a hit and run and they're running, write the right license plate down. If you have your pen and you're used to quickly grabbing it. It's faster than pulling out your phone. Correct. Absolutely. What if what if there's a situation where something happens and you need to leave? You don't want to be there when the when somebody shows up and you need to leave some information. Mm -hmm. You can probably find a something. Heck, you can write on their forearm if need be. Yeah, okay, I'm going to let people connect some dots on this. I'm not going to advocate for something there. Uh, but the number of times in a day that people ask for, do you, have a, do you have a knife? Do you have a pen? Do you have a pen? Do you have a knife? Absolutely. It's constant. If you have the knife and the pen, you're more likely to be able to use the knife and the pen should the situation arise. I think these are the two of the most important tools available. We haven't gotten to my favorite one, but I, I think these are so incredibly valuable. And if you're not carrying both, I think you, I, I think you might reconsider. Yeah. Can I guess what's on what's your last one? Uh, I well I've I've actually got two sure, not three last more. One. I mean the one at the top of your list. I'm wondering by all means flashlight. Yeah. That was my that I had three on my list. Yep. Pocket knife, pen and flashlight. Now also, here, I, I did come up with a fourth which we'll talk about later, but flashlight is definitely on that. Here's what here's why I, and I've talked about this. This is probably what the sixth time we've talked about this over the 8 years on this show about my my love for flashlights until you have a flashlight on you that you can use at any time you do not know how often you will use it there is no situation unless you somehow have figured out what riddick did in pitch black in that that prison to to get the shine job on his eyes oh, yeah. where you are better off in the dark than you are in the light Having a flashlight makes less dark, more dark, more dangerous, less dark, less dangerous up until, I don't know, some extreme position where you're blind, but yeah, that's, that's rare, right? So having a flashlight, yes, I can use it as a manipulative tool in the same way I could use a, a durable pen, but simply put, this light is in my hand or tucked in a hat or behind my ear or, or oh, oh daily yep i was there was something going on with my wood stove the other day or when i walk to my car i have light yep absolutely and it's one of those items it's one of those items that like you said you don't realize how often you are going to use it until you have it my mom and i when i was 11 or 12 13 years old maybe were house sitting for a friend and we were staying at her house for like a week and we went over there ahead of time to see the, what the house was like and whatever. And the woman that we were house sitting for said, this is the microwave and this is how you use it. And microwaves were new. We didn't have a microwave at our house. So There's we were like younger, younger audience members right now. Going, what? what? Yeah. Yeah. Before we, microwaves. Exactly. We didn't I have remember. a microwave in our house. We never had one. I never had one growing up. And she's showing us a microwave and we were both like, okay, whatever. Like we'll never use that. Cause like we've, never had one we don't need one we used it all the time yeah. and when we left 
when we were done house sitting, we got home, we bought a microwave like right off the bat because we yeah. realized how useful it is. It's that same sort of thing. You don't know how useful that flashlight is. And then everyone out there is probably saying, oh, I have a flashlight on my phone. Well, yeah. how useful is that stupid thing? You know, the you amount get- of time it takes you to get to that is it's too long. Yep. Because he- here's what's going on. Assuming you are a responsible martial artist, you are not walking around outside in the dark with your phone on you, in front of you. It's in your pocket, it's in your jacket, it's in your purse, right? It's somewhere away from you. You will have to acknowledge a situation that warrants your light as a precursor to you getting your phone. Yeah. That is likely to mean that something is happening close to you. Mm -hmm. How many seconds does it take you? Oh, one, two, three. I would say three on the short end. Yep. What can happen in three seconds in the dark? Well, and on top of that, just in terms of using the flashlight all the time for different things, the flashlight on your phone sucks. It, it does. does. It really it's does. It's not a good flashlight. Yeah. I can have I I will have this on me and off off. It's a tool, it's a weapon. Mm-hmm. Oh, what's going on? Boop. Um for anybody who cares, we have no official relationship with these folks or anything. In fact, no relationship, but this is this is Olight and I have learned I don't buy the real cheap ones anymore. This is about 20 bucks, $22. I lose them a couple times a year. It's worth it. It's $22. The cheap ones go through batteries faster uh, and they're just not as durable. This I would have no problem smashing into somebody's head if I need to. Yeah. Confidence. Okay. Um, yeah. So I just, the, the one that I think people are most likely to find value in of the things that we're talking about is this. It's yeah. the light. Mm-hmm. Okay, please, please consider. I got two more. Any guesses? Um, no. Okay. One of the others is one we've talked about quite a bit. Belt. A belt. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've said this before. I will continue to say it. A belt is the most underrated improvised weapon we have available to us. And here's how I can prove that. Next time you're around people that you know kind of well, take off your belt, swing it around, and see if they take a step back. <laughs> they will. Not, I don't yep. care if you hold it by the buckle end or the, the other end. Nobody wants to get hit with a belt. Some of us got hit with a belt. I was not one of those people. Some people used to get hit with belts. Yep. It triggers some PTSD in them. But everyone looks at that and says, that thing's kind of heavy. It's going to hurt and it has range. Yeah. Here's the beauty of it. I can take it absolutely anywhere with no one noticing. As wonderful as a cane is, as a self improvised self-defense weapon, I think a belt is better. You walk with a cane, you become more of a target. Exactly. Exactly. You look like a victim. Or you can look like a victim. Right. Yep. I have this belt everywhere I go or or a belt everywhere I go. I can quickly take it off. Is it instant? No, no, not at all. But I can deploy it pretty quickly because I do practice and I'm confident in it. I take this belt and I've hit things with it and it leaves marks. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, Anything else on the belt? Not on the belt. No, that's a good one. That's good. I've got one more. And it's one that people don't talk about, and it drives me nuts. I have one as well, and we may be in disagreement on it. Okay. So let's say I, I want to hear your. I want to hear yours. Oh, okay. You don't want to say. I've done, it for the, la- I've done the last. Co- I've done the last couple. Okay. Um, cell phone. I agree. And and here's why, and this is where we may we may differ on, and and I'm interested to know your thoughts on this. Uh, I was thinking about just the other day. If I if I were approached on the street and were being mugged, and I said loudly, "Hey, blank," whether that's Alexa, Siri, whatever, Google, whatever, 
Call 911. Mm -hmm. The person that is mugging me just heard me, will likely know what I just did, right? I just told my phone right. to call 911. Yep. Even if I don't have a cell phone on me, the, the person assaulting me does not know that. Right. Um, or... Uh, hey, blank, I'm not going to say it because I don't want to activate mm -hmm. people's phones. Nope. Hey, hey, blank, uh, call 911 and record video. Yep. Even if that is in my back pocket, it's still active and working. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think people don't realize how important that could be. Now, here's the downside. That might freak out the person attacking you. Like anything else, you have you have to play the scenario you yeah. have to respond appropriately uh i'm not going to deploy a knife or or some other tool if i don't need to mm -hmm. i'm not going to take someone who looks like you know maybe this is going to end in a a mild way and do something that might escalate it yeah right I, I think a cell phone is a wonderful tool and admittedly the reason i didn't think about it is because it's always on me mm-hmm it has a tremendous amount of utility. Is it as good as a separate flashlight? No, but it has a flashlight. Yep. Is it as good as a professional video camera? Almost these days. <laughs> there are plenty of things where maybe something's happening and you need to record video of someone. Uh, please don't just stand there and record if you can help. But if there's a scenario, right, there's plenty, there are plenty of reasons you might need to or want to capture video. And then of course, Andrew's suggestion, whether it's actually implemented or not is wonderful. And, and just as an aside, folks, if that's something you want to test, you can do that. 911 has no problem with you testing your service. You just need to acknowledge that. If you say, hey, brr, call 911, don't hang up. Tell them, hi, I just, I, I was testing something. I wanted to make sure it worked. Mm -hmm. I am perfectly safe. They're going to ask you some questions. You'll be on the phone for 60 seconds. It'll be fine. Well, my suggestion would be instead, test it by going, hey, brr, call Jeremy Lesniak's cell. Just call somebody else. I mean, you're and, still and that, test that, that also That also works. That tests it. Uh, some people want to be able to test the, the whole thing. They might not believe that, you can yeah. do that for 911 versus a regular call, or maybe your phone will default to calling via WhatsApp or Facebook or something instead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, if it's something that you think you want to rely on, there, there's nothing wrong with testing it in that way. Man, I should have I should have actually done it. My phone's right here. I should have actually done call Jeremy Lesniak. And then your funny. phone would have rung. And it would have been fun. All right. You ready for the last one? I am. I'm ready for the last one. Wallet. Okay. Why is a wallet so important? Well, it, it has the things that we think it should have. It has our identification. It has money. But it also becomes a way that we can think of getting out of situations. This We live in a time where most of us do not carry cash. 10 bucks. What can I do with 10 bucks? I can get a couple gallons of gas. Mm -hmm. That'll probably get me out of trouble if I'm about to run out of gas. Yep. Maybe we're in a situation where power's out and I can't run credit cards. Like, I don't know, the storm that's coming this weekend that's about to brutalize parts of New England, it is entirely possible. In fact, it is so likely that we're going to lose power that I got an email from my power company. Yep, I, I did as well. I got a text. Right. So there are circumstances where you need cash. $10 doesn't take up much space. It takes up the same amount of space as $20 or $50 or $100 or $1. I try to have a little bit of cash on me at all times. I have other things in there. Uh, business cards, which they are ways that I can leave identification. Maybe I'm not going to leave my license, but it's a way to say, hey, Jeremy was here. And this is how you can get a hold of me. Yeah. Now, here's another way to think about it. I actually stopped carrying a wallet for a while, for a long time. Mm -hmm. Because my wallet kept getting thicker and thicker. And you yes. know how much time I spend in my car driving. Yep. And sitting on my wallet started to actually give me back pain. Yep. And my chiropractor was like, this is likely the culprit. And I took the wallet out of my pocket and that, that pain started to go away. So in the meantime, 
I started taking all of my my critical cards, my debit card, my license, everything, and all my cash, and I just carry it in my front pocket. Mm-hmm. Now, if I had a wallet in my back pocket, and somebody said, "Hey, uh, give me your wallet," like I need, you know, I I need yep. money, I have no problem giving them giving them my wallet because there's nothing in there. Right. Right. Some people will carry two wallets. Yep. That's fine. You can do that, uh, and just. To acknowledge what Andrew's saying, you can if you're watching, you can see my wallet's very thin. It's, it is very it's thin. kind of a knockoff of like the Ridge wallet or something like that. Again, no, no. And I and I think now I could probably get away with having the wallet because the reason the wallet kept getting thick is because I had because again I do so much driving. I had my Exxon card, I had my Irving card, I had my yeah. Shell card, I had my you know all these gas cards, and now that stuff's all on my phone now. Right. So I probably could get away with wearing carrying a wallet all the time because it would be thinner. Yep. Makes total sense. All right. So do we have any others? I, I think I think we're good. Audience, what do you carry? Would love to know. Especially if there's something that you feel really passionate about. Is there something that you carry? Do you carry a drumstick? Either for drumming or for eating of the turkey or ice cream variety. Sure. If you carry drumstick ice creams in your pocket, I want to know about that because I have questions. But I but I, I held, for those listening, I held up a drumstick because I always have drumsticks near me. And you can bet that I have picked these up occasionally and be like, hmm, I wonder how I could, like, uh, you know, mm-hmm. manipulate these to do stuff. It's a mindset as much as anything else. And I would just encourage you as you go through kind of life and you bump into little problems, not the big ones, you don't bump into those often, but the little ones, oh man, it's dark. I wish I had a light, flashlight, right? If you carry a keychain, there are a thousand and one things you can put on a keychain that are handy. I just want you to be safe. We want you to be safe. We want you to think about our approach to the world as martial artists being safe just because it doesn't, easily lend itself to committing violence against someone attacking you does not mean it is not relevant under the heading of self-defense. Absolutely. All right. Now, if you appreciate the things that we do, like Andrew said at the top, you can join our Patreon. You can buy stuff, use the code podcast one five. You can tell people about what we do, but here are two other things that you might consider doing. If you're a martial arts school owner and you appreciate the practical kind of no nonsense, integrity driven methodology that is whistle kick, maybe consider hiring whistle kick and the team led by myself in a consulting effort. We can help you grow your school, make more money, increase your profits, gain more students, in the same sort of ways that we do these things for Whistlekick and for other schools. You can also consider hiring us or or hosting us, I guess is a better word, for seminars. Myself, Andrew, Craig, there are a bunch of us that teach seminars and we are happy to come through and share some things with your students. All you have to do is reach out. Best thing, email me, jeremy at whistlekick.com. Now our social media, everywhere you might think of is at Whistlekick. Andrew's email, andrew at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. And I, I think I think that takes us to the end, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So there we are. And until next time, train, train hard, hard, smile, smile, and have a great have day. Have a great day. <laughs>